In this lesson, we're going to be diving into the evaluate section of the InfoSemantics component widgets. Now, each of the InfoSemantics component widgets, of which there are two at the moment, the slider component and the rotator component, are interactive widgets. What that means is that they have success failure criteria. Okay, what is a success failure criteria? Well, you may not know it, but you have already been using success failure criteria in your courses. For example, this button here has a success criteria and it has a failure criteria. The success criteria for this button is satisfied when you click on it. The failure criteria for this button is satisfied when you click anywhere outside it. When the success criteria for any object is fulfilled, then its on success action runs. If the failure criteria is fulfilled, then its failure action will run. So the InfoSemantics component widgets also have success and failure criteria. But when and how the success failure criteria are reported is left up to you. And you can figure those settings inside the evaluate section, which we will look at in this lesson. So we're going to be looking at three examples of where you would use the success failure criteria for the slider and the, ro the rotator component widgets. In this first example here, I have a question from a course that I've been building. And let's say this is for a uh, scuba gear instruction company. Now in this question of the course, the client wants to uh, make sure that the student knows what is the maximum diving depth for the scuba gear that they've provided the student. So here I have my a slider component set up where I've got a little diver and I can drag him down to different depths and I can tell what depth he's at because I've got this little caption here reading out the current uh, meter depth he is at. And uh, we want it so that when the diver is at 40 meters and I click this submit button that will uh, report success. But if it's at any other depth then it will report failure because 40 meters is the maximum depth for this scuba gear. So I'm going to close out of this preview and then I'm going to double click into my widget. Then I'll move over to the evaluate section and you can see that there's nothing here at the moment and that's because we haven't enabled it. You can enable the success failure criteria for your component widgets or you might choose to leave it off. But in this case we want to turn it on. So I'll do that by clicking this switch here and that turns on a lot of settings here. But basically this whole window divides down into two sections. First of all, up here, I have to choose when the widget will report success or failure. And then using the success requirements and the failure requirements, I determine how the widget will re to report success or failure. First of all, let's have a look at the um, settings up here. If I choose continually, then this widget will report on every single frame of the movie. Now this is useful for some interactions, but it's not really what I want for this interaction. Mouse up will report success or failure when we mouse up on the interaction. So for example, over here, if I was dragging my diver and up and down, as soon as I release my mouse cursor and let it drop at a particular depth, then the widget will report success or failure. Okay, that's kind of cute, but it's not what I wanted. Easing N has to deal with easing, which we're going to look at in another lesson. But the last option here, button, is going to make the widget report success or failure when a particular object is clicked on screen. So I already have this submit button on screen here and I've given it a name of submit. So I want the widget to report success or failure when that button is clicked. So I'm going to select the text input area here and type in the name of that submit button, submit. Okay, so now we've set up when the widget is going to report success or failure. Now we need to determine how. Now remember, the only correct answer for this question is a depth of 40 meters. And do you remember how we were finding out what depth the scuba diver was at? Well, it had to do with the captivate variable that the widget has been linked to. In this particular case, it's this depth variable that this caption is reading out. So if I go into my slider widget here, we can see that my widget has already been tied into the variable depth and it has a minimum value of one and a maximum value of 100. 
So what the evaluate section here does for the success and failure requirements is it's going to take the value of the captivate variable that the widget is linked to. And according to that captivate variable, we can set up requirements for when the widget is going to report success and when it is going to report failure. So in this case, the success requirement is that this variable exactly equals 40. So I have four different requirement sets that I can use here. In this case, for success, I want to use the value set. And here I have a slider where I can determine um, at which point, okay, say I put, set this slider to 40. With the current setting here, if the score is greater than or equal to 40, then that will fulfill the success requirement. But in this case, I don't want it to be if it is greater than equal to, I want it to be if it is exactly equal to. So I'm going to open up the drop down menu and choose score equal to. And then only if the score exactly equals 40 will this widget report success. Now for failure, I want it to be that if the score equals any other value, so if it equals 39, 100, or two, that that is going to fulfill the failure requirements. So I'm going to choose the opposite requirement here, which means that if the success requirements are not fulfilled, failure will report. So let's click OK, and then test the movie. Now when I drag my diver down to a depth of say 81 meters and click Submit, that's going to be incorrect. If I drag it up to 17 meters, that's still going to be incorrect. Even if I drag it down to 39 meters, just one meter off the correct answer, that's going to be correct. In incorrect, I mean. But when I drag it to 40 meters, click Submit, then the widget will report success. Okay, so that's how we can set up that particular interaction to work with the evaluate section of the widget. Let's look at the next interaction. And for that, I have this slider here. Now, this slider, let's say it controls a piece of machinery. When the slider is in this gray idle area, then let's just say the machinery is just ticking over. If I put it into this normal green area, then it is starting to be effective. But say I pushed it all the way into the red area, then it's starting to be dangerous. Okay, let's say for this particular interaction, if the slider is in the idle area, I don't want the widget to report at all. If it is in the green normal area, I want it to report success. But if it is in the red area, then I want it to report failure. So we're going to have to use a bit more of a sophisticated evaluate uh, requirements there, aren't we? So the first thing we can do to make life easier for us is find a way to accurately determine when the slider is in the gray, the green, or the red areas. And to do that, we can tinker with our minimum and our maximum values here. So at the moment, the minimum value is zero and the maximum value is 100. But this slider here has a range of moving up and down of 300 on this particular track. So over here, if I look at my bars here, they have a height of 300. And if I go and just select one of those uh, squares there, I can see that it has a height of 100. So each one of these bars has a height of 100. So if I go into my slider component widget and change my max value to 300 and my minimum value to one, click OK, and then press F8 to test this slide. Now we can see that when my slider has a value of 100 or less, that it must be in this gray area. If it has a value of 100 to anywhere up to 200, it must be in this green area. If it has a value of 200 or above, it must be in the red area. So by changing our minimum and our maximum values, it makes it easier for us to determine where the slider is positioned. So let's go into the evaluate section. Double click to open the widget, go to the evaluate section, and turn on the success failure section. Okay, in this particular case, I want the widget to report success when I mouse up on the slider. So the mouse up option is going to work fine for me. For success requirements, I want it to report success when it is in that green area. 
Now, we know that is the air value between 100 and 200, but here for the value slider, I can only set it so that if it's 100 or greater, that it's going to report success. So that means even if it goes up into the red area, the high 200s, that it's going to report success as well. What we really need is another little slider here that allows us to set a limit. And we can actually do that if we use the range requirements. So in here, I can set my maximum here to 200, and then my minimum to 100. And I could just go like that. And then if the score is between 100 and 200, then the widget will report success. Okay, how about our failure requirements? Well, in that case, I'm also going to need to use the range setting. And this, we want this widget to report failure if it's anywhere between 300 and 200 as well. So I'll just use my steppers here to bring that up to 200. And now we have these success requirements and these failure requirements set up. I'll click OK, then press F8 to test this slide. Now if I drag my slide around and I mouse up in the idle section, we can see the widget doesn't report anything. If I move up into the green area, the widget reports success. If I move all the way up into the red area, it reports failure, but still once again down in the idle area, it doesn't report anything at all. So you can see that the slider component widget and the rotator component widget allow you very fine control over when your widget reports success and when it reports failure. It gets even finer. Let's have a look at our last interaction. Now this one uses the rotator component widget to replicate the knob that is on my oven just out the door there. I can use the uh, rotator component widget to spin the knob around and I can choose a particular setting on my oven. So the particular requirement for this question is set the oven to any fan setting. So that could be fan bake or fan grill. Okay, before we get into how this widget evaluates, first of all, let's make it easier for us to determine when the knob is actually pointing to fan grill or fan bake. At the moment, you can see that uh, when my knob is at its minimum angle, it's got a value of zero. And if I turn it all the way around to defrost, then it has a value of 100. Up until now, when we've been using the component widgets, we've usually had a pretty large minimum and max value. We're talking into the hundreds here, but you don't have to have large values. If I close out this preview and then go over to the rotator component widget, I can change my max value so that it is just six and my minimum value so it is one. And now that means we can see here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six different options here. If I only have a minimum value of one and a maximum value of six, then when I test the movie, we only have a very limited amount of numbers to work with. So when the knob is at off, it is at one. When it points to fan bake, it is at two. When it is at bake slash pizza, it is three. Maxi grill four, fan grill five, defrost six. Now we do have one little problem with this, and that is even when I point my knob over here and it looks like it is pointing at fan bake, we can see it still has a value of one. But if I move it down just slightly so it's a little past fan bake, that's when it ticks over to two. So in order to make this uh, a little better, I'm going to go and open up my rotator component widget and I'm just gonna add one more to my max value. Click OK and let's test again. And now when I move over to fan bake, we can see that the value two ticks over a bit sooner. So now when it's pointing at fan bake, it is two. When it's pointing at baked pizza, it's three. Maxi grill four, fan grill five, and defrost is covered by both six and seven. Now, what we want to happen is that when the knob is pointing to fan bake or to fan grill, it will report success. So that means if the captivate variable has a value of two, or if it has a value of five, it will report success. If it has any other value, then it will report failure. So let's close down the preview and go into my widget. Move over to the evaluate section and turn that on. So here, I can't use a value score because although I could go and set it to two, set it to equal to, I'm not gonna be in, able to encompass the other fan bake setting, which is at value of five. Okay, I can't use a range because even if I set it to two, 
set it to five, then everything in between two and five is going to be successful as well, three and four. Even if I set it to score outside rather than score inside, it's not going to work. So that's why we have the specific section over here. Here is where we can type in specific values at which the widget is going to report success or failure. In this case, place success because it's under the success requirements section. So I'm going to type in two, put in a comma, and then five. So if it's the captivate variable set to two, or if it's set to five, that's going to fulfill the success requirements. Otherwise, if the success requirements are not fulfilled, I've set failure requirements here to opposite. So that means that failure will report if success is not fulfilled. Click OK, test the movie. And now because I've set this widget to report success or failure on mouse up, when I move my knob over here to fan bake, mouse up, the widget reports success, move it to bake pizza, failure, maxi grill, failure, fan grill, success, defrost, failure, or if I move it all the way over to off, that's failure as well. Okay, so that is how you can set up the success failure uh, criteria for the rotator and the slider component widgets, as well as any other component widget made by InfoSemantics. But now that you've got those success and failure criteria set up, you can go down to the reporting section of its properties here and check including quiz. And that means you can set up interactions using the rotator and the slider component widgets and then have them score to the quiz. Okay, I hope that has opened up some new ideas for you on how you can use the rotator and the slider component widgets.